And to discuss the situation in South Kordofan a bit more with me, I'm joined by Jonathan Hudson from the Enough Project, an anti-genocide group based in Washington, D.C. Boy, uh, Jonathan, it's great to speak with you. Uh, you just watched the piece along with me. And what's to become of the Nuba people? Um, how does this dispute get solved on a day when the people in South Sudan are celebrating independence? Tony, the solutions need to come from the individual people on the ground in both North and South Sudan. Everyone has a piece of the problem and therefore everyone has a piece of the solution. I want you to know that everything's not so black and white in Sudan. Today, using the Twitter hashtag love from Sudan, many individuals in the North are sending messages of love and respect to their brothers and sisters in the South, mm. saying with sadness but no bitterness, you know, we're sorry to see you go, but we celebrate your liberty and independence. At the same time, the government in the north is bombing its own people yes. in the north. In the Nuba Mountains region, this border region of South Kordofan, we've seen visual evidence, satellite imagery, photos from the ground, reporters going in, aid workers reporting out, campaigns of bombardment. The Khartoum regime using artillery shells, using aerial bombardment from Russian planes called Antonovs, also using helicopter gunships, MI-24 gunships called flying tanks that are hunting Nuba people, trying to eliminate Nuba civilians from the Nuba mountains because of their ethnicity, not because of anything they said, did, or believed, but simply because they're Nuban. They're trying to clear out this border area um, and waging a state-sponsored ethnic cleansing campaign that is ongoing at this moment, even as indicted war criminal president uh, Omar al-Bashir sure. is on the reviewing stands uh, celebrating uh, the independence of South sure. Sudan. So, so it's Jonathan, both a parade of celebration and a charade of international diplomacy. Sure. So, so Jonathan, w where do the two sides, the, the, the North Sudanese, the South Sudanese, the leadership, where do they come together? What's, what's the point of agreement uh, that Coming leads to some kind of... Coming together is absolutely essential. Yes, Tony, a coming together is essential for both the North and the South. They have to, for their mutual self-benefit, come to agreements on how to share oil revenue, yes. how to share other precious natural resources, water, grazing rights, how to reverse uh, decades of state-sponsored ethnic cleansing campaigns by the North that are ongoing in Darfur, in the disputed border area of Abye, where the border hasn't yet been demarcated and the ethnic Dinka population there has been cleared out by bombing from the north, and how to settle the ethnic tensions in the Nuba Mountains and get food and water and medicine to the civilians who have been bombed in 10 towns and villages by their own government in South Kordofan. Well, Jonathan, thanks for uh, helping us highlight the problem, and, and maybe we can all work on, on a solution to this situation. Jonathan Hudson, he's the director of communications Thank you, Tony. Yeah, at the Enough Project, an anti-genocide group in Washington, D.C. Uh, Jonathan, good to see you.